Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, this is Redberry Wheel here, and welcome back to another Civil Air Patrol video. Now, in today's video, I'm going to be talking a little bit about joining as an adult member. Now, I have talked a little bit about senior membership or being a cadet sponsor member and ages, so I'll, I'll talk a little bit about that, and I'll also be talking about the differences between the cadet sponsor member and the senior member, just to be clear about what the differences and the benefits are between the two different options. So if you're deciding to join as a member of Civil Air Patrol as an adult, this is a great resource for you to get interested and excited about joining the program. And if you are in it already, then it's also a good opportunity to learn a little bit about these two things. So let's go ahead and get started. The required age to be a senior member is a minimum of 18 years old. And if you're joining between the ages of 18 to 21, you can be something called a flight officer. And then there are three levels of flight officers that you can progress through as you are a senior member between those ages. Now, the reason for that is because they want senior members who aren't over 21 yet to get an opportunity to learn more about the program and also to kind of distance them from older cadets because cadets can be in up until 21 if they join before 18. So just to make sure that there is a distinguishable difference, they try to keep the flight officers separate from the cadets and sometimes commanders even recommend not allowing flight officers to interact with cadets on a regular basis. I think it's okay, um, personally, if they're mature enough mentally and they show that they're interested in supporting the cadet program. I don't think it's a huge deal, but it's honestly up to the commander as to how involved someone between 18 and 21 as that flight officer can be. As a senior member, you can choose to be an NCO or an officer. A majority of people who join as senior members are officers and they will promote to second lieutenant after I believe it's six months within being in Civil Air Patrol and they have to complete something called level one training and get verification of their identity like citizenship through like a passport of some kind, and they need to get fingerprinted. During COVID right now, they aren't requiring fingerprinting be done, but it will have to be done at some point. And then later on, they will expect senior members to send in those fingerprints if, if we return to a similar situation to what was prior to COVID. So as an NCO, there are benefits to being an NCO. You can serve as a mentor to the cadet NCOs within the squadron. You could serve as a character development officer. You could talk about drill and ceremonies. And a lot of the NCOs within Civil Air Patrol are prior enlisted military personnel. So if you are a senior master sergeant in the Air Force, or if you were a higher level NCO in any of the military branches, I'll just say any of them because it, it is any of them, then you can get the equivalent to that in Civil Air Patrol terms. So you don't necessarily have to start out at Staff Sergeant, which is the, the, the four stripes, but you, you can actually get your equivalent to your branch. So if you're a Senior Master Sergeant in the Air Force, as I used as an example earlier, then you could potentially get the equivalent of that senior master sergeant within Civil Air Patrol. And there's an approval process that is required. It has to get approved up at the region and then come back down again to the squadron level because it, it goes squadron, group, wing, and region, then the national level. So it has to go all the way up to region in order to approve NCOs to get that equivalent ranking. So that that's just something to keep in mind if you are previous military and you're interested in being in Civil Air Patrol, you can do that enlisted route, and it is increasing in popularity. And then there's the officer track, which a majority of senior members take, and the equivalency thing works as well within the officer side. So if you were, let's say, an ensign in the Navy, that would be equivalent to, I believe it's a 
first lieutenant in in Civil Air Patrol. It's it's just the equivalent of what the pay grade would be. And depending on how high up it is would determine what level of approval it would need to go either up to the region or national level. I think sometimes it has to go up to the national level. Most times it does for officer ranks. But like, for example, when I was transitioning from being a cadet to a senior member, I made it to cadet colonel, and the equivalent of that in senior member grade is captain. So I had to be approved on the national level to get from cadet colonel, then be a senior member, and turn into a captain in the senior member side. So that is an option, and if you have a specific, like, position for your job or you have specific training like if you're a doctor for example then you can get promoted in a faster manner um, like an expedited promotion just so that your grade is a little bit more appropriate to what your professional experience is and for example if you are a CFI then you can automatically get captain in Civil Air Patrol just because of being experienced with flying. I'm not going to list all of them, but it, it depends and you'd have to double check in the regulations to see if you qualify to have some kind of accelerated promotion and you just get bumped up to a higher up thing. And then there's also cadet sponsor members. And cadet sponsor members are essentially anything can be done to support the cadet side as a cadet sponsor member and you can count as a second senior member um, for like 2 deep leadership purposes with the cadet protection policy, which I will discuss in a later video because I'm planning on discussing that at some point. And they can drive the cap vehicles as needed in addition to serving as a chaperone for activities. So the cadet sponsor member is basically just kind of watch over the cadets and serve as an additional body. And they don't necessarily have to be actively involved with the unit. If you are trying to decide between being a cadet sponsor member and a senior member, I would recommend choosing to go just being an official full senior member as opposed to the cadet sponsor member because you are a volunteer. You are not required to put in any amount of time within the organization. And if you want to be more actively involved, like let's say th there was someone who recently joined who is a librarian in training and they're very interested in like helping organize things and sort things and so they might fit really well with the historical side within Civil Air Patrol and like archiving things and they also enjoyed hiking and they, they love hiking so talking about emergency services you go out into the forest you hike you look for missing people and you you do that as a team it's a great opportunity to work together with others to serve the community. If you're a cadet sponsor member, you could just like go to the activity and sit there, but you're not actively training, you're not progressing, you're just there to support the cadets. So I do recommend doing full senior membership, but it's, it's all your choice if you're trying to make the decision between those two things. Cadet sponsor member, you may not feel as guilty if you can't have time to do it, but being a, a full senior member with all of the, the benefits and being able to promote and being actively involved, I think outweighs the benefits of being, well, in being Civil Air Patrol member versus just kind of like present, but not necessarily fully engaged. So there are also different types of memberships, like there's full and retired and all of those kind of things. But if you're brand new to Civil Air Patrol, most of those things wouldn't apply to you because like a 20 year service requirement is is needed in order to eventually become retired. But there, there's also like the congressional units where if someone is a local legislature, a legislator or on the national level, there are congressional units that give them the, the grade of lieutenant colonel when they join Civil Air Patrol which is an interesting benefit, and they can also go on flights as part of the congressional units, so that's very interesting, and also the staffers can be part of those, so if you're a congressional staffer, you can take part of that. So that was everything that I was planning on discussing in today's video. If you have any questions for me about, like, getting involved, looking for squadrons or anything like that, you can always email me at redberryweobusiness at gmail.com, 
or we, we could always chat in the comments section about what might be the best choice for you if you want to talk about it openly in the comment section. So I hope you enjoyed the video and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching and that is all folks. Until next time, toodles.